We're going to be talking about Tudor during today's stream. We're going to be talking about what are UCC filings, how they affect you. This is a big deal. You need to know because it's basically plainy, plainy, placing a lien on your assets. And a lot of business owners don't even know how this process works and don't know how it can adversely affect their ability to get funding in the future. So you need to know what UCC filings are. So that way you can find the best kind of financing and know whether they are or aren't attaching UCC filings and how that affects your future ability to be able to get money. So let's start from the beginning. What are UCC filings? Well, this is actually a uh, an acronym for uh, Uniform Commercial Code. So UCC is Uniform Commercial Code. Basically, it's like a, a law that governs commercial transactions in the United States. So, you know, you want to check into it state by state. Local laws are different. So there might be state laws and there might be even lo local city or community laws based on where you are that can kind of layer on top of this or uh, that are also to the side of the main thing that we're talking about today. But this is basically for the United States, national across the country, a law that basically covers how commercial transactions take place in the United States. So UCC filing starts when a company agrees to pledge assets to a lender. So this is how it starts, right? Is Let me give you a simple example. Let's go and say I go to get an SBA loan. Well, SBA loans, typically the lender wants to have collateral equal to the loan amount. It's not even the lender, it's SBA's requirement. SBA's requirement is that you take all the collateral you can get, and if the collateral of the business isn't worth as much as the loan, then you start going after personal collateral as well. So basically, we've got an asset. Let's say it's real estate. And I go to get an SBA loan, and I say, okay, I'm going to leverage this commercial property uh, so if I ever default on the debt, you can come after the commercial property and use that to be able to get your money back. So it's typically an asset that's pledged to collateralize debt. Now there's unsecured and there's, uns and there's secured debt, right? Unsecured debt is like a credit card. So, uh, and, and oftentimes let's say a credit line, but let's just stay with the credit card. So a credit card is an unsecured debt. It's not secured by anything. If I go to get a Chase credit card and I default, like Chase, I'm not agreeing that Chase can take my stocks, my bonds, my real estate, my whatever. It's unsecured. It's not secured by anything. Then there's secured debt which means I'm pledging an asset as collateral in case I default. So an example is securities-based financing, where I say, hey, I'm going to pledge my stocks and bonds, and you're going to give me a credit line leveraging these. And by the way, if I default and don't pay you for my credit line, you're going to take my stocks and bonds, right? So that's what a secure debt is, is we're collateralizing it with some form of asset. And a UCC filing starts when we get secure debt and we say, here's an asset, we're pledging as collateral for in exchange for you giving us the money. And then, of course, the lender has an agreement and they sign the contract. We sign the contract. And then the lender is then free to file a UCC lien against those assets. And by the way, if you're just coming in, I always like to say hello. So please tell me where you're coming in from um, so I can be able to give you a shout out here. Good morning, uh, Nettie. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. And uh, Bernard Coley, thanks for coming in too. Hello, Georgia is in the house as well. So now you have a UCC. Now you've agreed to a secured debt You've agreed to get an SBA loan in exchange for, you know, collateralizing commercial real estate. Then the lender says, okay, they are now free to file a lien against that asset. Now, it's important to know some lenders don't do this. So I always find it's good practice to ask that question when I'm going to apply for a loan. Hey, do you file UCCs or, or do you have a UCC filing? You know, ask for, uh, up front. A lot of times they don't do it. A lot of times they do. So it's always good to know. The rest of the information in today's training will tell you whether or not you want it or not, but at least good question to ask the lender if they file a UCC or if they actually have a UCC filing they file or they don't. So if they do, well, then lenders file what's called a UCC1 uh, financing statement with the secretary of state that your business is in. Okay, and then that creates a lien against that actual debt. Now, liens are then first come, first serve. So that means that if I go and I say I own commercial real estate, and then I go and I get an SBA loan and they secure that commercial real estate, um, again, that's that they're going to take back if I default. Then I go to get another bank loan and I use that same real estate as collateral for both debts. Well, whoever filed the UCC filing first in case of default is the one that gets paid back. So let's say that I have a piece of commercial real estate, I own Frank Clear, I want an SBA loan, 
The lender says, okay, we're going to collateralize the real estate. I say, no problem. Go ahead and do that. I get the SBA loan. Then let's say I go to get a bank loan as well. The bank says, we want to collateralize that commercial real estate as well. And say, no problem. Well, then SBA was the first one and first position. They're the first one I borrowed against. They file a UCC filing. Then the bank comes in and they file one. And then I go bankrupt. Well, then to get paid back, whoever filed the UCC filing first, is the one that gets paid back first. And then my bank, who actually tried to collateralize the same real estate after the SBA loan, well, then if there's money left over, they'll get paid, but it's first come, first serve. The one that files the UCC filing first is the first one that gets paid in case of default. So if two lenders try to take out a lien on the same property, well, then the first filer gets priority in case of default, and it's a matter of public record. So it's easy in that bankruptcy court to determine, okay, you're the first one that had a UCC filing, so you're the first dude or gal in this situation to be able to get paid. So these are basically used to protect creditors, right? Because you can easily run a search for an outstanding UCC1 lien. You can also see these on business credit reports. Business credit reports even have a UCC filing section where you can see outstanding UCC liens that are out there against a business. Now, many states offer online searches for reasonable fees, a lot of times even free. But again, in my world, the easiest place to figure out if these exist is just look at the business credit report. If a UCC line is filed, you're going to see it appear on the business credit report in the UCC section. All three, DMB, Equifax, and Spring, they all have those sections on the commercial credit reports. So a business can borrow from more than one lender. You can easily do this. You can even use the same collateral to be able to collateralize the debt at multiple lenders if you want to. But, and oftentimes, the lender is going to do a UCC search to see if that same collateral you're using to collateralize their debt has already been used with another lender. Now, if specific collateral is different for each UCC filing statement, well, then that specific collateral liens are more common for special purposes like inventory financing or buying equipment. So bottom line is, is that you can use the same debt to be able to collateralize multiple different kinds of loans or the same collateral if the lender will allow that. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes the lender is going to come in and say, hey, wait, you already have a lien against that equipment. You're not, we're not going to accept that same equipment as collateral from you because we would move into second position, right? And we don't want to. So you can do it. You can try, but a lot of lenders won't take that second or third position on that debt. So if they see that you have a UCC filing, if they see that you've already used that collateral as a, a lien, or you already have a lien against that collateral, the collateral's already been used to collateralize another loan, then in a lot of cases, they're just not going to give you another loan. So some things to keep in mind there. Uh, also, again, tell me where you're coming in from. I always like to say hello. And I've got Jamal coming in from Charleston, South Carolina. And Letitia, say, thanks for saying good morning. I appreciate that. And uh, 18 Lucky Vlogs says, this is how the pros build business credit. Great work. I appreciate that. Multiple Atlantas in the house. A lot of people from Atlanta in here. And Steve says, can I add UCC to my personal credit report? Uh, UCCs aren't shown on personal credit reports. So you're only going to see UCC filings on commercial credit reports. Great question. You're not going to find those on commercial or on consumer credit reports. And recall says, good morning. Tell me where you're coming in from. By the way, if you're getting value from this, I can see your likes in real time. So please give me, give me a like, give me a love if this makes sense. And if you're really getting value, then share it with somebody. So then that way more entrepreneurs can get the information. We can help them as well. So UCC one is active for five years. It shows up that lean shows up for five years. And it also will show up in the commercial credit report for that long as well. Must be renewed by the lender if the long term is longer. So if I get a 10-year loan, an SBA loan might be 30 years, right? Well, then it's SBA's responsibility to be able to then renew the UCC filing. If they don't do that, then that if that lender doesn't do it, then it expires in five years. So the lender also can file updates to UCC1 in case of asset changes. So if the asset changes... Uh, if the value of the asset changes, if any of those type of things happen, they can update the UCC filing as well. Okay, so typical assets subject to UCC filings, account receivables, office equipment, real estate. As a matter of fact, if we look at an SBA loan, the number one asset used as collateral are account receivables. Now, if you follow my trainings, you probably already know what those are by now. If you don't, to bring you up to speed, an account receivable is when like a customer uh buy something me from just making numbers up. They buy something from me for $3,000 
and I let them pay me back on that $3,000 over six months, right? $500 over six months or, you know, as an example. Well, that means I'm letting them take the money they owe me and pay me on terms over six months. That is called an account receivable. Okay. And that goes into my books and those account receivables also known as factoring other also known as AR. That AR is the most common asset that's used to collateralize a business debt typically. So if I go to get an SBA loan, the most common type of, 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 of pledged collateral is account receivables. But it could also be high value office equipment. It could be commercial real estate. It could be residential real estate. It could be stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRAs. It could be vehicles. It could really be any asset that's worth money. But keep in mind, lenders typically want to make it as easy as possible to go get that asset and take it back if you ever default. So these are the most common, but definitely not the end of what at UCC filings are filed on. But again, some of the most common assets also include inventory, vehicles, as we mentioned, investments such as stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRA, um, those type of things as well. Letters of credit, commercial instruments like promissory notes, large pieces of operating equipment, can also be, you can also get a blanket assignment, which lets you legally transfer ownership of present and future account receivables as loan collateral. So again, you also could may say you are, uh, you can legally transfer ownership of present and future account receivables as collateral as well. So a lot of things can have UCC filings to be collateralized for business debts. Now, the creditor has a security interest in every business asset with a blanket assignment. So if there's a blanket assignment, you might say, all the assets can have a UCC lien filed against them. And this is more common for traditional bank loans, alternative business loans, loans from SBA. Basically, like I said, some one day I stood on stage and I actually pulled up SBA's underwriting guidelines. And SBA's underwriting guidelines for the bank says, look, you need to collateralize every asset the business has up into the actual loan amount that they're borrowing. And if it's not enough, then you need to go after all the personal assets as well. So these blanket assignments aren't uncommon if you don't have one asset worth what you're actually borrowing against or if they feel it's a higher risk situation. So let me give you a real personal example. Credit Suite went to get a $325,000 loan from SBA. We have a million dollars plus in account receivables. There's no reason they should need any other asset to collateralize that loan besides our AR. But then they came back with an underwriting decision that asked me to collateralize my home as well as the AR. Very uncommon request. AR is worth over a million. Loan is 300. Then they also want a million of debt, a million of our AR to collateralize. Then they want my house as well. Very uncommon request. So we went to SBA and said, what's going on? Like, why would you, or the bank, why would you try to collateralize my home? We have a million dollars worth of AR. Well, what happened was there was judgments on my LexisNexis credit report I didn't know about because they weren't accurate. They were never my judgments. I don't even know where these things came from. So we didn't know that when they said, look, there's these liens on your, your LexisNexis. We're uncomfortable with this. Well, that doesn't make sense. So I pulled my LexisNexis, found these liens, don't know what they are. They're completely not true. Went to the county, got all the documentation from the county showing, hey, these are like, I have no outstanding judgments. Here's from the county showing that this doesn't even exist. I don't even know what you're talking about. Try to go to the creditors to get letters. Needless to say, it was a big obstacle. Like it, it delayed us by like a month or two months. We had to go get all this documentation. It's hard to prove a negative, right? It's hard to prove I don't have a judgment. Like when I don't have a judgment, how do I prove I don't have something or something never existed? So a lot of hoops, but eventually was able to do it, proved it to LexisNexis. LexisNexis removed those judgments that were never legitimate to begin with, right? And then I also um, then got the lender to waive the requirement for the house. Now they're like, okay, we're comfortable now. These, these judgments aren't even accurate. They're not true. They removed the stipulation to collateralize my home. And we got the deal done with just AR being used to collateralize that real world situation of how this can adversely affect you. Now, another lesson here, you need to get your LexisNexis credit report. It's hundred percent free. And you need to because all kinds of things are on LexisNexis that are not on your consumer credit reports. Let me give you another example, real world example. So to get that SBA loan, they also did pull up like one or two judgments that were real. 
Back in the mortgage crisis, anybody that knows my story, owned a mortgage company, mortgage crisis occurs, lost everything, took my personal money to try to keep and retain employees as long as I could, uh, near bankruptcy, I mean, everything that came out of it, right? Foreclosures, repossessions, judgments, all the bad stuff. So a lot of those, like the credit card issues never really pressed me. So I had a couple judgments that I never did anything about. They dropped off my TransUnion, my Equifax Experian credit reports. They're gone. Nobody can see them. I'm thinking all is good. And then I really found out through this process, the power of LexisNexis, because even though those are off my TransUnion Equifax Experian, they live forever on LexisNexis. So the lender found them on LexisNexis because I didn't know better at the time. Now I teach this and I never cleaned it up and I had to pay off those judgments, even though the lender never came after me, I had to pay them off to secure the actual business loan, which by the way, lesson here to be learned as well. When I went to negotiate on those judgments, there was no negotiation. If you go to a, an attorney that has a judgment for a credit card company and you go to them and say, I want to pay this off, it's not out of the goodness of your heart. They know that you're trying to get a mortgage, you're trying to get a loan. They know that that judgment has created a barrier for you getting what you're trying to get. And now you're coming to them because you have to pay it off to get whatever it is you want to get. It's why judgments are filed. They know that when a judgment's there, that eventually if you ever want to get a loan or get a house, that if these judgments come back up, you're going to have to address them. But the moral of the story here is you got to get LexisNexis. If you don't look at that, those things live in infamy forever on there. And if you don't clean up and clean up or your LexisNexis credit report, then what happens is you have to go through this. Now, lesson to be learned here. When I went to LexisNexis and I said, hey, these judgments are not correct. Like, I don't know. Like, these are. These two are, are real. But these other three, I don't even know what you're talking about. Here's all the information from the county. Here's all the information from all these sources proving you're wrong. Well, what LexisNexis did was they removed all my judgments, 100%. Even the two, I told them, I said, these are real. These are accurate. They removed them. So here's a lesson. If I would have done that up front before I applied for the loan, I wouldn't have had to pay the like $20,000 out of my pocket. I had to pay to pay off old judgments to get the SBA loan. So very important lesson here. If I would have got LexisNexis months before I applied for a loan and then looked at it and cleaned it up, addressed this stuff, disputed it, fixed it, then I never would have had to do that. So I learned a really important lesson there, and you should too, about UCC filings, about how these acts actually, what actually appears on a Lexus credit report, how long it's on Lexus Nexus credit report for, and how can it, it can adversely affect your ability to get business loans. So hopefully a lot of lessons you're getting out of that. Uh, and I think you'll see a lot of value in that because again, this is really the key to being able to get business loans with little resistance. And hello, Samantha coming in from Florida. I appreciate that. How do you get that credit report? LexisNexis, if I come right here, when I type in free LexisNexis credit report right here, it'll, it'll give it to me. Free LexisNexis credit report. I go home, LexisNexis, order your report online. Right here, the first search it comes up, request form. There's my form to get my report. So it was just a simple search of free LexisNexis report. And right here, I found the very first thing under the ad is to get that free report 100% free and you absolutely should get one. Okay. So because that will help you avoid a lot of other issues. So how did this affect your ability to get funding? Well, if you default that every asset covered by that lien can be seized by the actual lender. Blanket liens require a court judgment against you. They get the judgment. They come after all of your assets if you had a blanket lien. So judgments are a matter of public record, searchable by any possible future lenders. So you got to use these UCC wildings uh, wisely because I just told you a real problem of, of how these come up and how these can adversely affect you. Now, lenders will know they can search for judgments and the SBFE, which is a small business financial exchange, also has info on UCC filings. A lot of sources have them. They show up on your business credit reports and they're going to affect your ability to get a loan if only collateral ha already has a lien. So let me give you another real world example here to show you the problematic how these can be. Credits, we got a loan for $75,000 early in our history. We paid 100% of the loan off and they got a lien against our account receivables. Well, we paid the loan off, didn't think anything about it. And then what happened was then we went years later to get this SBA loan. Well, one of the underwriting requirements was to prove that the actual loan was paid off 
because and to get the UCC filing released because the lender had filed a UCC filing stating that AR was collateral for their debt. Here's the problem. The lender went out of business. They weren't even open. So they filed a UCC filing against us showing the assets we had were collateralized by their loan. We paid off the loan. They never released the UCC filing as they were supposed to. Now we go to get another loan. They see the UCC filing and say, hey, you need to get this released. We can't get it released because the bank that's supposed to release it is out of business. Now you're caught in this loop where we couldn't get it released. Now, we proved to the bank that the debt was paid off. We proved to them that the lender was out of business. And then we went through what took years to be able to work with the bureaus, et cetera, and all the sources to show, hey, look, what do we do here? Like, uh, we don't have a UCC file to prove to the sources that have the data that we didn't have a UCC file and get it released. But it was a very difficult process that, again, delayed the ability to get the loan months. So keep in mind, we just got uh, $300,000 from our bank because we see a recession coming and we stock up on money. That's what I preach to you and it's what we live by as well. Three weeks done money in our bank account. That SBA loan, the first one we got took like four months because of all of these delays. So people are like SBA loans and $300,000, $500,000 loans take a long time. They really don't if your stuff is in order. But if you got all this junk on LexisNexis and all this kind of stuff that's floating around out there, then it really delays the process and your ability to get money takes months instead of weeks. That's why I'm telling you this, because if we understand what lenders are looking for and remove these barriers, then we can really get money fairly simply without all these obstacles in the way. We just have to understand what causes the problems. So what can you do? Well, avoid them when you can. I find in business lending that a lot of lenders that offer the same kind of funding product, um, a lot of them don't attach UCC filings while others do. So the kind of loan we first got where a UCC filing was filed was called cash flow financing, merchant cash advances, revenue lending, all goes by the same program, different names. Well, there's plenty of lenders that do that same kind of funding that don't file UCC filings. So you have a choice. With a lot of funding, you can go to one lender that file UCC filing, one that doesn't. That's why I'm telling you to ask in advance. Do you have a UCC filing you file or not? If you ask five lenders and they all say, yes, 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 well, then maybe everybody in that industry does. But if you go to get cash flow finance, you can say, hey, do you attach a UCC file? And they say, yes. And then you go to lender two and they say, no. Well, then if given a choice, try to go with a lender that doesn't have them so you can avoid these things when you can't. Look for non-collateral funding options. Unsecured money is the best way to go. Like if I can get loans or credit lines without pledging assets as collateral, well, then I always want to do that. Unsecured debt is better than secured debt because I don't have to go through all of this. Okay, so here's some examples. You know, you're able to come in and get credit line hybrid, for example. So with this program from us, it's unsecured. You can get 150,000 in credit lines. You can get 0% interest for the first 18 months. It works for startups. You don't need to verify cash flow. You don't need to have any kind of collateral. Uh, there's no personal guarantee. You have to, or excuse me, there is a personal guarantee with this, but it helps you build business credit to get away from personal guarantees. And all you need is good personal credit. So if you have like 680, 700 FICO score, good personal credit, low inquiries, low utilization, you can usually get approved. If you don't, you can use a credit partner, a friend, a family member, uh, somebody else that can actually be a guarantor instead of you. So you've got options. Half the people we help with this program, they're not even using their credits qualified. They're using somebody else's credits qualified. So a great option, great way to get six figures in business funding without the collateral. We also look at business credit cards, right? So we look at universal type credit cards, bank credit cards, Visa cards, MasterCards. We also look at vendor credit. We look at credit at stores like Amazon and Best Buy and Home Depot, Lowe's, Office Depot, Staples. You know, almost every kind of retailer um, or vendor offers credit lines, credit cards to buy stuff at their store. They're, it's all unsecured. So that none of that money requires any kind of collateral. So some things to think about. Plus, a lot of them have rewards programs. We just talked about this in a conversation last night where I have a friend and I was talking to her and she's going to, uh, she's going to London. She's going to New York and a hundred percent of it's free. She's just using points that she accumulated from her business credit cards. So again, a lot of rewards, a lot of incentives for using this kind of revolving credit cards instead of actually coming in 
and being able to use secure debt. And you can either use your personal credit to get these kind of credit cards, or you can build business credit starting with starter vendors and then like vendors like Amazon and then move up to, to, to bank credit cards like Visa and MasterCard. So you have a choice whether you want personal guarantees or not. If you want to build your business credit, you have about 14 accounts in your credit reports. You can start to get Visa cards and MasterCards uh, without personal guarantees and credit and, and credit checks. But remember, it's just simply the difference between secured debt, where you're pledging collateral as security, or unsecured debt, business credit cards, for example, and some credit lines like I just walked you through, where you don't have to. So if you want to get around UCC filings, well, then try to get unsecured debt first. And if you do get, you know, other kind of debt, well, then see if they will not file a UCC filing. And just by asking, you'll oftentimes be able to avoid lenders that do. So in recap, these are very common. They're not a bad thing. It's not like it's a negative that you have. It. If you look at your commercial credit report or somebody else's and they have them, it's not a bad thing. It's not seen by lenders as a negative. It's really designed just to tell lenders that you have that debt that's already secured by another lender. So they don't think they can secure it, right? So I don't go to lender A and go, hey, I want a half a million dollar loan. I'm going to, you know, use my AR as collateral. And then you go, you get the loan. Then you go to lender two and go, hey, I want a half a million dollar loan. I want to use my AR as collateral. And then these guys don't know that you're using the same collateral for both loans. It's designed so that doesn't happen. It's designed so after you get loan one, they file a UCC filing, and then you go to get loan two, and you tell the bank, I want to use my AR. And they go, wait a minute, there's a problem. Your AR is already secured by a lien by another lender. And then that's their choice, whether or not they still want to loan me that money or not. Uh, but again, that's what they're for. It's not bad. It's just literally to notify other lenders that you've got that debt secured by them so other debtors don't come in and think, that they can use that same asset as collateral when it's already being used. And again, some don't care, some do. It can affect your ability to get funding. We talked about multiple ways that this can happen uh, and creates issues like if they don't release the UCC filing when they can, or it affects your ability to get loans if the asset you secured for one loan it, it, it is, is already secured somewhere else, then it makes it more difficult to get that second loan using that same asset as collateral. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, some things to think about and, and talk to lenders about if they're actually going to file UCC filing or not. Now, next time we're going to talk about partnering with the investor, pros and cons, how to go about it. You know, remember there's two kinds of money you can get for a business. There's debt. I owe a bank money, points, interest, et cetera, credit card, credit line, loan, and there's equity. And I give somebody ownership interest in my business. I sell stock. I bring in, bring in a private investor, an angel investor, a venture capitalist. Should you do equity financing or not? Well, we'll talk about the next time. We'll talk about pros and cons of working with private investors and doing equity financing versus debt financing. If you got value from this training, well then, hey, you know, make sure you like and subscribe and you know, reach out to us. We'll talk to you more. Uh, when you call us, we do a finance assessment and three very unique things happen. We do a fundability check. We figure out what's wrong from a, a fundability standpoint that lenders look at. Um, and then we help you fix those things so you know that you have the best chance of getting approved for funding. We'll give you tips and tactics to build your business credit. We'll even you know pull your business credit reports for you for free with Dunn and Bradstreet at FX Experience. We're the only source in the world that gives you free credit reports from reporting agencies. And by the way, they not free for us. We pay for them and then give them to you for free. Okay. But the other thing we can do is a finance assessment and tell you all the loans or credit lines you can qualify for now. And all that happens just by simply giving us a call at 877-600-2487 info at creditsuite.com if you want to email us or go to creditsuite.com forward slash console to actually schedule. So Manny says, since you created the security with your signature, can you use a UCC uh, three and use uh, and used as a collateral for a loan. Well, typically, I'm not sure what you're asking. So, uh, since you let, let me pull this question up. Here we go. Show on stream. Okay. So, many says since you created the security with your signature, can you use UCC file? Well, it's not like that. Really, you got to think about the UCC filing is saying it's not by itself going to be able to be collateral to secure anything. It's a lien. It's a it's a, a liability. It shows that you already have that SS asset secure. So it's not like you can leverage the UCC filing itself. It's a lien. So you can't 
leverage the lien to be able to do that. I think that it, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, and how do you get that credit report? LexisNexis, we talked about that. I showed you uh, all you have to do is go to uh, do a search on free LexisNexis credit report. That will pull that up for you. Okay. And uh, that second person has asked me that. So let me show you guys again. It's real simple. All I have to do is go to free LexisNexis report and it automatically pulls up here. Free LexisNexis report is what I'm searching in Google. I have an ad. The very first search, search says order your report online. Here's the URL if you want to take a quick shot of it, consumer.risk.lexisnexus.com forward slash request. I fill out this form and they'll mail me that credit report within 30 days. And you'll be blown away. I mean, this credit report's a big deal here. I'll show you real quick. It's always super easy for me to pull my own because it's the biggest thing in my filing cabinet. This is my LexisNexus credit report. Just so you can get an idea. Here's my finger so you can see the size of it. I mean, it's, 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 I don't know, like cup two, three inches. It's 300 plus pages. So this is what you're going to get. It's a book and, and it's pretty freaking scary what's in this thing. Every address, phone number, email address you've ever had, title companies you've closed on your home, interest rates you paid, uh, your homeowners association, the building materials of your home is all in there. Every car you've ever owned, the VIN numbers, every insurance policy on a vehicle you've ever had, every license you've ever had issued, every, every license you've ever had revoked, all of your criminal history is there. So any misdemeanors you have, um, any felonies you have, all that kind of stuff is in there. It's pretty uh, crazy. And to give you an example, one more example of how that adversely affected me, uh, I actually uh, had, when we went to get that SBA loan, they also said, have you been convicted of any felonies or misdemeanors? I'm like, no, like I'm a straight shooter. And they came back and said, actually, you have misdemeanors against you. And like, why did you lie to us? I had to pull a, a background check on myself to even know what they were talking about. And like when I was like 20, 20 years old or 21 years old, I was like popping wheelies on a motorcycle to try to impress a female police officer. Whole story. It was really funny when I look back at it, but I didn't know 30 years later it was going to come back and affect my ability to get business loans, right? But that all came from LexisNexis, all these issues we have. Now, I'll tell you what we did about it. We partnered with LexisNexis to be the first company ever that actually takes their data and puts it in the front. So the later this year, we're rolling out an actual fundability score that pulls into sources like this and then tells you, hey, there's all these problems you need to be aware of that lenders are going to see to help you fix them before they become like, you know, deal stopping uh, problems. So it helps you uh, remove those barriers to get funding. But in the interim, get your report 100% for free and go through and be able to get that fixed. I think that that's going to be very valuable for you. And thank you for your time. Hey, thanks for your time, Jamal. I appreciate you coming in and hanging out with us today. And uh, what if in Octo, uh, Octo Corp says, what if things are wrong with it? Then dispute it with them. Uh, and again, on the report, they even give you the address and everything you'll need to dispute with them. Uh, I just write them a letter. I wrote them a letter. So I wrote them a letter and said, hey, these things are wrong. Here's my proof that these things are wrong. Uh, you need to fix it. Here's the action I want you to take. And then just like a normal credit bureau, per the Fair Credit Reporting Act, they have to remove that data. So if, if you prove it's wrong or if they can't verify it. So in my case, in 30 days later, they removed it. And I gave you an example that they even removed judgments that were really mine. And I even told them they were mine just because I disputed others that weren't. So keep in mind, it's not hard to be able to fix. You just have to get the report. And then when you do, they'll give you instructions on that report of exactly uh, how you can get it fixed. So give us a call today for your free finance assessment, 877-600-2487. If you got value from this training, like and subscribe. Go to creditsuite.com. Less than one minute time, you can subscribe to our social channels. The reason you want to do that is we have daily tips on Facebook and, and Twitter. We have one minute videos on Insta and on TikTok. We've got thousands of videos on YouTube that will help you with every single aspect of getting money for your business. We have a podcast where we have experts come on and teach you everything you need to learn about growing a business. All of our social channels you can access in one place at the top right of our page, creditsuite.com. So check it out. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we're going to start talking about equity financing and how you can get money from private investors. So thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Look forward to seeing you on our next training where we talk about more cool ways to get the money you need to start and grow your business.